Welcome into NBA Now by Chat Sports. My name is Chase Senior. Coming your way on today's show, going to do a scouting breakdown of Kai Soto, one of the more intriguing prospects who could go in the second round of the 2022 NBA draft. Take a look at some of the teams he's worked out with in the pre-draft process, and also we'll round out with some potential destinations for Kai Soto. Now, a lot of people know who this player is, especially those of you watching from the Philippines, but if you don't, Here's some information on Soto because he's really had a fascinating storyline and timeline up to this point. He's trying to become the first Filipino-born draftee to ever get selected in the NBA draft. So history could be made on June 23rd. He came to the United States as a teenager to attend the skill factory in Atlanta to further his developmental process because the competition in the States a lot better than it is in the Philippines. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, targeted by programs like Kentucky, as well as Georgia Tech and a handful of others, he did not go to the college ranks. He decided to turn pro. He originally joined the G League Ignite so that he could team up with Jalen Green, as well as Jonathan Kaminga. But because of prior engagements with the Filipino national team, as well as his want to, to go to the NBL to play with the Adelaide 36ers. He never played a game in the G League. Played for the national team, as well as the 36ers, where he's been able to continue his development. Now, if he played college basketball, a lot of people would become familiar with Kai Soda. But because he's been playing in Australia and on the Filipino national team, a lot of people don't realize the quality of player that he can become. And at 20 years old, I think a team should draft him in the back end of the second round. What do you think, though? Predict the future for Kai Soto. We're only getting started on today's show. You don't want to miss a single second of it. If you think Soto is worthy of getting drafted, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. If you don't think he's worthy of getting selected with any of the 58 picks in this upcoming draft, I want you to comment why. As for what his skill factory coach in Atlanta had to say about Soto, and keep in mind, of course, he's a little bit biased. He wants him to get selected, and he coached him, so he obviously likes the player, but Jeremiah Boswell said this about Soto, with his size and length, his ability to play the game with his mind, see the floor, pass the ball, shoot the ball, he can really do everything. So he's unique in that. There are things that he can always improve on. In the NBA, there's a lot of small ball, switching on pick and roll. So how does he move laterally? Can he switch on guards? And how does he play pick and roll? Can he hedge and get back? And those are some of the concerns that I have on Kai Soto. You look at the size, 7'2", 7'3", depending on where you look is about 240 pounds. I think that he can add some muscle and beef up just a bit going up against some really good players on the low block in the trenches at the NBA level. Like I said, playing for the Adelaide 36ers. We'll show you the numbers here momentarily. He's only 20 years old, and I've said this a couple of times. If players like Boban Marjanovic and Taco Fall can get run and they can get tick at the NBA level, I think Soto can as well, especially with how he can develop over time if he just gets into an NBA facility and gets in that weight room. He's not that agile, needs to improve on his footwork, and like his coach said, from his high school days, needs to do a better job of moving laterally, laterally, and I do have some concerns about how he can get out to the three-point arc to defend some really athletic bigs to alter and block shots out there, but also if bigs put the ball on the deck, they can blow by Kai Soto because he's a little bit slow. Again, these are things that he can improve upon over time. As for his numbers, in the NBL with the 36ers, he was named the fan MVP down there in Australia. Seven and a half points per game in limited minutes per game. It's one of the best international leagues in the world. Four and a half rebounds, less than a block per night. I do think his shot blocking ability is better than what a lot of people realize and think when you just look at the raw numbers there. Like Robert Williams, a good job of just altering and affecting shots at the rim with that length and that height. And shooting from beyond the arc, I want to see him clean up his stroke a little bit. I want to see him have more confidence with letting it fly from beyond the arc. But 38.5% from downtown, pretty solid for a guy that checks in at about 7-2, There are some teams who are reportedly interested in Soto in the lead-up to the draft. This coming from his agent, and once again, is this just agent talk to hype up his client, or is it for real? Teams that scouted Australia this year, which surprisingly, given the history of all 
Australia, sending players to the NBA is not as extensive as one might imagine. We're very enthusiastic about Kai. That's why we have so many teams that want to bring him in for individual workouts. And we actually already have commitments from at least one team that said, if he stays in the NBA draft, we will draft him. We have that already. And Kai Soto is staying in the NBA draft. So with this agent saying, we have at least one team that has said, we're going to take him. Is that agent speak? Maybe. But coming up around the corner, there are obviously teams invested in him, interested in taking him, because he's had a lot of workouts in the pre-draft process despite an ankle injury. And then at the back end of the show, stay tuned for what I believe could be the best fits for Kai Soto. But first, want to hear from you in the comment section once more, and I want everybody watching to chime in and let your feelings be known. Which team do you want to see Kai Soto go to? Let me know in the comment section right now. Also, make sure you subscribe to us here at Chat Sports. We'll be going live for both rounds of the NBA draft on June 23rd, which is coming up in about a week. And then a week after that, NBA free agency does get underway. We'll be live for days at a time, hours at a time, free agent tracker, free agent grades, best available players. That's why you subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for all of that. Known Kai Soto workouts up to this point. These are teams who have worked them out in the lead up to June 23rd. New York Knicks, Orlando Magic, Cleveland Cavaliers, Chicago Bulls, and the Atlanta Hawks. Here's what a league source did say about Soto's aforementioned injury to his ankle, which kept him from working out for more teams this week. Workout scheduled this week had to be canceled because he needs a little bit of time to heal, rest, and elevate. Hopefully the ankle will get better fast enough so he can do a few more critical workouts. Here are some of the teams that I think that Soto would fit really well on. And all of these teams have a need for a backup big man. The New York Knicks, they worked out Kai Soto. Obviously, they're interested, so I think Soto would be a really good fit. They could lose Mitchell Robinson. Los Angeles Lakers, they are bereft of depth in that front court. They might not have Dwight Howard. They moved on last year from DeAndre Jordan. They don't have a young center that they can build around and develop. And you put Soto at the G League level, he could be a good fit with the Los Angeles Lakers. Boston Celtics, you have Robert Williams. Other than that, who are your backup bigs? Kai Soto, I think, could fit well on the Boston Celtics. For the Golden State Warriors, they might lose Kevon Looney in NBA free agency. And if that's the case, and they can't afford him because I think he's going to get paid 7 to $10 million if he hits the open market, you have James Wiseman, but with him, there are injury concerns, and if he can't hit the floor, not only are you losing a starting caliber center in Kevon Looney, you might, have a, might not have a backup in James Wiseman. That's why depth is really critical with Kai Soto going there, and I have trust in the Warriors player development staff that they're going to be able to develop Kai Soto to the fullest of his capabilities and tap into his fullest potential. For the Dallas Mavericks, throughout the playoffs, I thought that the back line of that defense was terrible. Once opposing guards and wings were able to get past that first and second level, what I mean there, the guards and the wings on the roster, Dallas lacks a rim protector, and Soto could give them that. Boban Marjanovic, we'll see if they bring him back. He has Luka Doncic's homie. Orlando Magic, another team that worked out Kai Soto. Cleveland Cavaliers also have to be on this list. Chicago Bulls, Atlanta Hawks, Utah Jazz. I also look at a team like the Philadelphia 76ers. So many times in the playoffs, when Embiid has gone to the bench, the Sixers have been so bad behind him. This past playoffs, it was Paul Reed as well as DeAndre Jordan. In seasons prior, it was Greg Monroe. I thought Andre Drummond was a really good backup for MB, but they traded him away in order to get James Harden. So I'd put the Sixers on this list as well as another team where Kai Soto could go to with one of those late second round picks. So here's the biggest question of today's show. Will Kai Soto even get drafted? And if he doesn't, he will be one of the more sought-after undrafted free agents in the NBA. Type Y for yes, you think he's going to get selected, N for no. And thank you so much for watching today's show.